Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Spark TCG, and today I'm going to be going over a post-rotation Karadon EX deck. Karadon EX is going to be coming out in our brand new sets that are expected to release in the early spring, and along with the expected rotation, which will be rotating the E block out of the standard format, we're going to be going over exactly what a post-rotation Karadon EX deck might look like. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you're looking for any cards, make sure to go check out GameGridSOC.com. You can use my code SMARTTCG for 5% off your next order for all your trading card needs. All right, let's hop right into it. Starting off here, we have Coridon EX. Coridon EX is a brand new card that is expected to release in the Temporal Forces set that we get in the early spring, and it actually is a very, very strong card. Its first attack, Vengeful Hammer, deals 20 damage, and it does 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if this card does survive a hit, we have ways to increase the HP of this card as well. Vengeful Hammer is going to be dealing a lot of damage, but we're mainly going to be talking about this card for its second attack, Kaiser Tackle, or one fire in two fighting energies it deals 280 damage and only recoils 60 back to itself with which as i said ways to increase the hp is not necessarily that big of a deal now admittedly two fighting and one fire is a very awkward energy count but that is going to be fixed due to its ancient ability it is an ancient pokemon which does mean that professor sada's vitality is going to work with this card professor sada's vitality has mainly been only used for roaring moon but now that it has more ancient pokemon coming out in the upcoming set this card gets significantly more powerful professor sada's allows you to choose two of your ancient pokemon and attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of them if you attach an energy card in this way you draw three cards so you're able to actually deal 280 damage on the very first turn if you're able to utilize Professor Sada's to get two energy on the board and then energy switch that other energy from the bench onto the active Coridon, you're able to deal 280, which actually is really, really powerful. Being able to deal this much damage is really cool, um, and I do think that this is a nice alternative to something like Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon has been seen some play, but not necessarily a whole lot of success. It's most powerful attack frenzied gouging unfortunately deals 200 to itself for knocking anything out and that just makes it easy prey for small one prizers to knock it out iron hands can knock it out there's just so many things that are able to knock it out when it uses frenzied gouging although kaiser tackle does not necessarily one shot everything in the format you not dealing 200 out of your 230 hp to yourself as recoil is actually quite nice and along with the support in this new set i actually think it's quite good Next up, we have Cryptomaniacs Deciphering along with Gutsy Pickaxe. Cryptomaniacs Deciphering is pretty much a reprint except with a different name from the card Mallow that used to see quite a bit of play in the standard format. Decks like Zorark GX and also Gardevoir GX in the past used to use that card to be able to put cards on top of their deck and then you get to use powerful cards in this format like Gutsy Pickaxe to be able to get that card into hand. However, um, Gutsy Pickaxe does have the other effect on it where if it is a fighting type energy, it actually goes onto one of your bench Pokemon. It pretty much just is a draw one. And if it's a fighting energy, you get to put it on one of your bench Pokemon, which pairs up fantastically with the Cryptomaniacs Deciphering because you can use the Cryptomaniacs Deciphering to be able to put fighting energy on top of the deck and then use the Gutsy Pickaxe to be able to put that energy onto the bench. Along with it, Cryptomaniacs Deciphering works wonderfully with Mew EX. Mew EX allows you with its restart ability to draw up to three cards during your turn which means that you can use cryptomaniacs deciphering put two cards on top of your deck and then use mu ex to be able to restart right into them which is really really cool i think cryptomaniacs deciphering is going to be played in quite a few decks and works really well with decks that play mu ex and especially well in this deck with gutsy pickaxe Alrighty, hopping into some of the Gust Effect cards, we have Prime Catcher and Boss's Orders. Prime Catcher is the brand new card that was leaked, which is going to be an A spec card. A spec cards were around about 10 years ago. We had powerful cards like Computer Search, Dowsing Machine, Scramble Switch, Life Do, and more, which were really, really powerful cards that you can only play one of in your deck. A specs have the exact same ruling still to this day where you can only play one A spec card in your deck. And this is one of the most powerful cards, in my opinion, that has ever been printed. 
Prime Catcher reads, switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot if you do switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench. So it has the exact same effect as Cross Switcher, but Cross Switcher was an item card that is actually going to be rotating out of the standard format, I believe, that reads you need to have two of them in your hand to actually use the effect of Cross Switcher because this effect is broken. This effect is absolutely ridiculous. There's a reason as to why cards like Boss's Orders, as you can see right here, are a supporter. The fact that this is an item card, I think has led to a lot of discussion on whether or not this card is balanced for the game or not. I think that we're gonna have to see more cards that get leaked over the next few weeks to couple months before this set comes out to have a better idea on exactly how balanced or unbalanced this card is going to be. But as of right now, this card's absolutely broken. I think that most players are going to put Prime Catcher into their deck. Maybe some players decide to play Master Ball. Master Ball is a card that was also leaked that just allows you to search for any Pokemon and put it into their hand. So maybe a deck that doesn't really rely on using things like Boss's Orders or, you know, any type of Gust Effect, maybe, you know, those decks will utilize some Something like the master ball and said but as of right now i think that prime catcher works fantastically in the coridon deck and yeah the card's amazing really really good card and i definitely expected to see tons of play Alrighty, here is the Coridon EX deck list that I have constructed. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this list. But we're going to be going into some of the counts, you know, reasonings behind cards and stuff like that. So we have four Coridon EX to start. You got to play four. It's consistent, especially with things like Pokestop. You can sometimes discard those Coridons with Pokestop. So having four is really, really important. If you want to get them down consistently, starting them is also fine. Do you want to hit that turn one attack? We have one great tusk as well. Nice one prize attacker being able to deal 180 damage for three energy is relatively respectable. Mew EX as well with that restart, as I said a little bit earlier, Mew EX pairs up wonderfully with Cryptomaniac's Deciphering, being able to use Cryptomaniac's Deciphering to put two cards that you need on top of the deck, and then you can restart into them. It's just really, really nice. Genome Hacking as well can sometimes pop up as an option, but typically that will not be something that we'll be doing. But with things like Energy Switch, you can actually surprise people with it. We got one Radiant Greninja as well. Uh, Moonlight Shuriken will not be an option in this deck like Roaring Moon, uh, which plays a couple of water energies. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. But um, Radiant Greninja still remains in the standard format, survives rotation with that concealed cards. Absolutely incredible card. Being able to discard and draw two is just so powerful. Helps out. Great card. Not much else more to say about it. One Luminian B as well. Consistency is king. Being able to Luminous Sign for that Professor Sada's Vitality when you need it, for that boss's orders for game. This is an amazing card. It just allows you to get what you need. Um, sometimes you can, you know, accidentally discard it with Pokestop, but still just the value of it existing in the deck, I think is worthwhile. One of Squawk Ability as well. You want to have those consistent turn ones. You want to be able to explode and hit turn one Coridon. So having Squawk Ability is a must. I admittedly have considered going up to two Squawk, but I think one is okay. For Professor Sada's Vitality as well, consistency, you want to be able to use Sada's Vitality on the first turn of the game every single time, so you got to play four in my opinion. Two Cryptomaniacs Deciphering works fantastically with things like Gutsy Pickaxe and also Mew EX, will typically be used after that first turn, after you've gotten Sada's Vitality off. This is a great card to be using, you know, towards the middle and end portion of the game to be able to keep the flow of energies, to be able to make sure that you're consistently drawing what you need. It's just a really good card. You know, consistency is really, really important with this deck, and you want to be able to consistently keep flowing and getting attacks off turn after turn. Double boss's orders as well, you know, just for control over your opponent's side of the field. We already have one prime catcher, so that kind of serves as the, you know, third boss's orders. I have considered just going up to three boss just because of Pokestop, but we already have Palpad in this list as well, so we'll be able to get those back. One Iona for hand disruption too, just being able to hand disrupt is pretty important. For Ultra Ball, for Nest Ball, for Gutsy Pickaxe as well. Gutsy Pickaxe, you want to be able to get those fighting energies when you can onto your Pokemon. We got three Earthen Vessel along with two Switch Cart and one Pow Pad as well. Pow Pad is important because oftentimes you're going to Pokestop away supporters. So being able to Pow Pad those back is definitely very, very important. 
We got four Pokestop, you know, just for consistency, want to be able to have those explosive turn ones, along with four energy switch as well to be able to make sure that we're able to hit Coridon EX on turn one as quickly as possible. This adds, you know, flexibility. You're able to also power up things like Mew EX really, really quickly as well. Just overall is quite good. Triple Bravery Charm as well, being able to increase your HP is very nice. Um, that is the card that I was talking about a little bit earlier about having ways to increase your HP, giving the Coridon 280 is definitely very, very nice. Makes it more difficult to knock out. Also is nice because your main attack recoils damage back on you. So, you know, just being able to kind of fix that with, you know, Bravery Charm is really, really important. Um, so yeah, we got one uh, Prime Catcher as well. Prime Catcher. You can only play one. You can only play one Aspect in your deck. Absolutely fantastic card. I did kind of consider Master Ball just a little bit because you could Master Ball turn one for, let's say, Squawk Ability. It just, you know, kind of increases your chances a little bit of having an explosive turn one. But just Prime Catcher is just so much better um, after that first turn of the game. And it's also good on turn one as well. I mean, you can hit turn one Prime Catcher Coride on EXKO, which is just really, really powerful. Um, you know, since we don't have... VIP pass as well. That might be another argument for Master Ball, just because you don't have as explosive turns as you, you know, had in the past. You know, things like Rory Moon, for example, utilized um, the VIP pass to have those explosive turn ones. So maybe Master Ball has some reason, but I think Prime Catcher is just such a powerful card in general. We have eight basic fighting energy as well. Crydon does take two fighting and one fire, and we also have Great Tusk as well. So we're going to play a heavier count of the fighting energy. And we also have the four basic fire to round out the list. So this is the list as of right now. You know, let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you think Coridon EX is going to be a powerful deck moving forward. Now, for full transparency, we haven't gotten the entire set list. So maybe this deck gains a couple brand new cards. But as of right now, I think this is a cool, um, you know, place to start with because I know a lot of people have been you know starting to build post rotation decks you know just kind of you know trying to see exactly what decks are good so I hope this you know helped out a little bit but anyways thank you so much for all the support as always if you enjoy the content make sure to leave a like and subscribe and with that being said this is smart tcg I'll speak with you again soon peace out if you're looking to improve your game, I do offer coaching on Metafy. I was ranked in the top 16 ranked players in the world last season, and I know what it takes to improve your game. My students want to combine three regionals last year, and I know what it takes to reach that next level. I do offer a free coaching consultation so you can get an idea whether or not coaching works for you. And along with that, I also have a singular sessions, training packages, and more. If you're looking to find out more information, feel free to book that free consultation or also don't hesitate to shoot me a message on Discord. My Discord will be in the description. All right. Thanks for sitting around and listening to this. I appreciate it. This is Smart TCG. I'll speak with you again soon. Peace out.